Hallelujah, praise the Lord, what an awesome God we serve, glory to God. Friends, welcome once again to our online program, Nelly Will I Seek You, Life Devotional with the Bible Academy. We give God thanks, we give God praise, because indeed the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. For the Apostle says in the New Testament, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ, making manifest the support of his knowledge by us in every place. We are thankful to God as he takes us to different parts of the world, preaching Christ among the nations. Again, we're also thankful that God has brought us to the close of the year 2023 as we have entered into the month of December. In our ministry, this month is the month of listening to God. It's important that you hear God concerning the coming year. Hallelujah. And Jesus tells us in the book of John chapter 10, my sheep hears my voice and they follow me. So the voice of the stranger, they will not follow. So we thank God for the privilege of hearing the voice of the master for the direction and the instruction and the need for correction, if need be, in the coming year. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, let's worship the Lord as we approach his word with reverence and with honor. Jesus, 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 there is something about your name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like a fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let a heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdom will all pass away. There is something about your name. Dear Lord Jesus, we worship you. Indeed, you are the reason for this season. We give you thanks. We give you praise. The Bible says, for the Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. So ancient of days, lily of the valley, bright and the morning star, we are particularly thankful for this year. The journey that you've taken us through, different journeys, different nations, going by air and by road, we thank you for safety. We thank you for your protection that indeed the Lord has been and he is our shepherd. We do not want. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside the waters. He restores our soul. He leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil because, God, you have been with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. You have prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our head with oil and cover us over. Surely your goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. And we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Praise the Lord. Father, think through my mind today. Speak through my lips of clay. Grant unto me as well as your people on air. And those who will watch the recorded version of this program, the spirit of wisdom. Grant us revelation in your knowledge. May the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Our topic today is hearing God's voice. And our text is from the book of John chapter 10. Jesus specifically said, my sheep hears my voice and they follow me. John chapter 10, I'd like you to read from John chapter 10 verse 1. Jesus began the introduction of the cha chapter by speaking about the shepherd and the sheep relationship. Verily I say unto you, he that entered not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbed up some other way, the same is a thief 
and a robber. Now Jesus has mentioned two classes of people there, the thief and the robber. It seems like the same person, but actually, in my opinion, by biblical interpretation or amplification, I can actually say there is a thief and there is a robber. The devil is the thief and the demons are the robbers. For he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the ports are open and the sheep hear his voice. And he called his own sheep by name and lead them out. The Bible says, Jesus said, the sheep hear his voice. Let's go to verse 27. Jesus repeated that statement again. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Verse 28, and I give unto them eternal life. The reasons why Jesus as our shepherd speaks to us is so we can have life. He said, I have come that they may have life and have it in abundance, life without limits. That's one aspect of the life. Then he said, we will have eternal life. Eternal life is not within a quantum, it's in its quality. We have God's kind of life. Eternal life in, in, in Greek is Zoe, the God's kind of of life. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. And in John chapter 17, Jesus said, this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. He said, and they shall never perish and neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Friends, it's important that as we approach the coming year and prepare for it this particular season, when most people will seek God in fasting and prayer, that we don't just tell God what we want him to do for us in 2024, but we hear from God what he wants to do for us in order and through us in 2024. Jesus is relating to his sheep. And in the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep in the context of the scriptures, it's a two-way street. It's not a one-way street. It's not just about you asking God to do what you want. Is about finding out what God will have you do. I remember when Paul the Apostle, on the way to the master, they encountered Jesus. He said to Jesus, Lord, what will you have me do? I believe this should be our approach to 2024. That it's not so much about what we want God to do for us, but what God will have us do in 2024. Believe me sincerely, if you will walk in the plans, provisions, and promises of God, in 2024, you should be doing what the Lord will have you do. And that is why the miraculous, the supernatural, the intervention of God in whatever challenge you may face in the coming year is going to come by the voice of the Lord. Again, another scripture in reference is John chapter 2. Jesus, his mom, and his disciples were invited for a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the Bible said there came a time that they lacked wine. So the people went to Mary and asked, Mary, Mary, we lack wine. Can you help us? As if Mary is a producer of wine. But I guess maybe they've had some things about the son of Mary, quote and unquote, that he does miracles. So Mary went to Jesus and said, son, would you like to help out? Jesus said to Mary, Woman, what do I have to do with you? My time is not yet come. Well, Mary understood Jesus. And so she went to the people and said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. The key to the supernatural, the key to the miraculous, the key to the divine interventions of God in 2024 is doing what he says, whatever he says to you, do it. I believe this is the key to our blessing, to our breakthrough, to our celebration, to our breaking forth on every side, to our expansion, to our increase, to our flourishing in 2024. Whatever he tells us to do, do it. John chapter 2, verse 5. Jesus began his ministry and his supernatural ministry by speaking instructions to people. In John chapter 2, Jesus told the people, go ahead, pour water into the water pot, according to the custom of the Jews. Afterwards, he told them, pour out now. And the Bible said, what was lacking became so much in abundance, I decree, 
and declare for you that as you walk in the will of God in 2024, as you take time to hear the voice of the master and hear the voice of the shepherd in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whatever is lacking in your life shall come in abundance. That's what the Bible records in the book of John chapter 2. Let's read the book of John chapter 2. And verse 11 tells us, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. Now, if Jesus began his miracle ministry by giving instruction, trust me, every miracle that Jesus did throughout his life was came by instruction. Except when some people initiated a faith based action and God honors faith otherwise oftentimes when God will give miracles to people he will give them instruction John chapter 2 verse 11 the Bible said this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Canaan of Galilee he manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him if we want to experience what those people experienced in John 2 11 the miracle that Jesus did, the manifestation of the glory of Christ, that we're going to follow the divine pattern, God's way of doing things. He did miracle by giving instruction. They obeyed instruction and they got the miracle. So there are two sides to the experience of God's blessing, God's favor, God's mercy, God's increase. God's miracle, God's breakthrough, the breaking forth on every side, the increase and expansion that God will give you as his child, the order, the divine instruction is what precipitates every kind of miracle. Hallelujah. In John chapter 2, verse 5, his mother said unto the servant, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. That's why it's very important that as we approach the year 2024, we must be able to hear what he is saying to us. And Jesus said in John chapter 10, my sheep hears my voice. Now, what is the key to hearing the voice of the master? John chapter 4, verse 20. John chapter 4, verse 20. It's important that you and I learn to hear the voice of the master. For the master doesn't just speak. He speaks to those who are attentive to him. In John chapter 4 verse 20, the Bible tells us, My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my saying. So, see, only those who give attention to the Lord speaks to. If you are non challenge if you are carefree, if you don't give attention to the words of God, you cannot hear his voice. Only attentive sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sins. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Verse 22. For they are life unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. There are three aspects of your head that you need to hear the voice of the master. Number one, Jesus said his sheep hears his voice. So how do they hear his voice? One, by using their ears. Attend to my words and then give it your time, give it your priority, give it your on top of your list of preference. Attend to my words. Prioritize time to hear from me. What he said, incline your ear to my soul. The first step in hearing the voice of the master is the use of your ears. Now, what do we get from using our ears? Information. He said, attend to my words. Incline your ears unto my saying. When we lend Jesus our ears, he gives us information. The Bible says, reproof of instruction is the way of life. Another word for information is instruction. 
when we give attention to the word of God, he will give us information. Information will give us instruction. And then the next part of our body that we need to be able to hear the voice of the master is our eyes. He said, let them not depart from your heart. You need your ears, then you need your eyes. How do I use my eyes to hear what God is saying? So interesting. I'm supposed to hear with my ears. And God says, let them not depart from your eyes. I like, see, when I read the book of Habakkuk, in Habakkuk chapter 2, the Bible says the vision is there for an appointed time at the end it shall speak. He said, I will stand upon my watch. I will see what he will see on me. I'm supposed to be here. But Habakkuk says, I will see in the King James Version what he will see. On me. So how do you see? And that's why God is saying here, yeah, they didn't know the path of them. I see. So when you see the word of God, what do you get? Revelation. The other parts of your body that you need to hear the voice of the master are your eyes. Not just your literal physical eyes, your inner eyes, the eyes of your understanding. Ephesians chapter 1, Paul prayed. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, so the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. So the eyes being referred to here has been explained better and further in Ephesians chapter 1. The eyes of your understanding. <clears throat> your inner eyes. Now this inner eyes is not something that you get by your human effort. The Bible said the hearing ears and the seen eyes God has made. It comes by the revelation of God. So what you receive from hearing with your ears is information. What you receive from hearing with your eyes is revelation. And God speaks by revelation to his people. Paul said so in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 concerning the visions and revelations that he received from the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul received visions and revelations from God. And God speaks in the last days. God pours out the spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters prophesy dreams and see visions. God speaks by revelation. Ezekiel said, I went up by revelation. God will speak to you by revelation. He will cause your eyes to see. That's one of the ways God's going to speak to you in this month as you approach 2024. The third part of your body that you need to hear God is actually your heart. So the Bible said, keep them in the midst of your heart. What you get when you receive the word of God, when you hear the word of God with your heart, is impartation. So there is information, there is revelation, and there is impartation. Why? Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2, the Bible tells us, the Spirit entered into me when he speak unto me. The Spirit entered into me when he speak unto me. Well, you see, the benchmark is you begin by giving attention to the word of God. In Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1, the word of God also instructs us again that for us to be able to hear to the point of understanding, we will give attention. In Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1, my son, attend unto my wisdom and bow your ear to my understanding. See, attend to my word, attend to my wisdom. The word of God may give you information, but the wisdom of God will give you direction. Let me rephrase it. The word of God will give you instruction, but the wisdom of God will give you direction. And you need both. You need both instructions and direction. In my mission work, I found myself in a country where I've never been, 
with the people that don't speak my language. And I can tell you for a fact, several times I've missed my way because the country is quite huge, very huge. And so what do I do? Well, I bring out my translator and I use my translator to ask people on the road how to find my way. Of course, I know where I'm going. I just don't know how to get there. So the Bible said you need both instruction and you need direction. But you need to understand it. So there are times I ask people questions and they tell me, sorry, I don't understand what you're saying because they don't speak English. And there are others who are patient. They will watch, listen to me by reading what I've written on my translator, on my phone, and they're able to give me direction. So you need both instruction, you need direction. When God speaks to us, is either giving us instruction for the coming year, or is giving us direction, or is giving us both. I believe too is the number of leaders. You and I should desire both instruction and direction for the coming year. In the name of Jesus, God will give you instruction through his words and direction through his wisdom. The Bible said God made his ways known unto Moses and his acts unto Israel. Beyond the acts of God, beyond the things that God will do, I believe God wants to carry us along in 2024 by showing us his ways, particularly as matured believers, made his ways known unto Moses and his acts unto Israel. And the last thing God will do, or the thought as it were, among others, I believe, that God will do for us in 2024 is correction. Now, this correction doesn't always come, but it does come because God loves us. So Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 to 10 tells us, he that the Father loves, he chastises. The word chastise means he corrects us in Psalm 23, verse 5. David said his rod and his staff they comfort us. You see, the correction of God is for our profit and our comfort. So God doesn't chastise you because he hates you. He doesn't correct you because he hates you. He loves you. He doesn't want you to miss the road. And there are several reasons why people miss the road. Number one, because the devil is out to deceive them. Number two, because he wants them to be disillusioned. And number three, because Satan wants them completely destroyed. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I have come that you may be directed properly. You may have life and have it in abundance. Life without limits. Friends, it is the will of the Father to guide you, to lead you by his voice. And this is built on number one, your relationship with him. The fact that there is a shepherd and a sheep relationship. And number two, you are building on that relationship with serious fellowship. Spending quality time with God. If I call my wife on the phone from a very far place, she wouldn't say, who is there? She probably just say, ah, honey, hi, what's up? Because she knows my voice. If I call my boy, my young boy in the house on the phone, she wouldn't say, who is on the phone? She would say, hi, dad, because there is a relationship. There is a fellowship in the same light. Your relationship with God should be cemented through fellowship. As we approach 2024, it is important for you and I to spend quality time with God. Don't be carried away with the wave of a season. Spend time to hear from the Lord. My sheep hears my voice as they follow me. Beyond relationship, another thing you need is recognition. Being able to identify the voice of the master. I remember the story of Samuel as a young man. Now, Samuel had the voice of God, but he could not <laughs> recognize the voice of God. So, while God spoke from one side, he ran on a different direction. I pray for you that in 2023 December, as you seek the face of God for the coming year, you will recognize the voice of God. Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice and they follow me. You will not only hear his voice, you will heed his voice. Because the reproof of instruction uh, is the way of life. You want to get 
into the life that God plans for you in 2024. The truth of instruction is the way of life, is the way to life. Believe me honestly, God is committed to you. He wants to give you instruction, he wants to give you direction, and where you have missed your way, like many sheep will do, he will give you correction. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all the thanks, all the praise, all the glory for the opportunity to approach this coming year with instruction, with direction, and where need be with correction from you. We ask for the hearing ears, the seeing eyes, and the heart that receives and understands. Oh God. Lepra ishkavana mako leke testo soso bako shika raka yembre esto zono mando sisto soso pato lebe. In the name of Jesus, we receive grace to hear as we listen to your voice. In the name of Jesus, we will not be like Jonah who ran away from the instruction of God and went to Tashish instead of going to Nineveh. In the name of Jesus, we will not be like Adam and Eve who disobeyed instructions from God and put the whole of humanity in a serious jeopardy. But we will obey God for the blessings of the generations of our children. Abraham trusted God and obeyed him, and several generations of his children are blessed. May we be obedient to create a pattern of blessing for generations of our children. My Lord, may we hear your voice clearly and confidently as we approach the year 2024. May you speak to us in clear terms as a matter of rema, personal rema, personal revelation, personal instruction for what you will have us do to experience all that you have prepared for us in 2024. Indeed, you said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It does not enter into the heart of any man. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. Say, so, but these things are revealed to us by his spirit. May the Holy Ghost reveal the will, the heart of the Father to us as we approach the coming year. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Shalom.